Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundant grace and mercy that you've shown towards us to allow us to come together to conduct this city's business. And Lord, we pray that we all come in with a spirit of unity as brothers and sisters. Let us not disagree or disengage, let us not disrespect or disengage from one another, even though we may disagree, but let's continue to work together as brothers and sisters. We say a special prayer for the men and women of Okoy who are serving in our armed services at, at afar and abroad, and a special prayer for all the families of our first responders. Remind them, Lord, every day that they send their brothers, their sisters, their husbands, and wives, sons, and daughters out. As they watch over us, you are watching over them. We're so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Commissioner Kennedy? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Oliver? Here. Okay, I have a uh, proclamation to read for the fire department, and I'm going to name off some people that's here for the fire department. If you there, stand up. Fire Chief Smothers? All right, Deputy Fire Chief Van Camp? Senior Inspector Hoyt, Inspector Ramos, Inspector Waldrum, Joyce Brown, and Sparky. Good thing we got Sparky here. <laughs> All right, I said I'm gonna read this, then y'all can come up. We'll get some pictures made we'll read for you. Whereas the city of Okoye is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting our state. And whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire. And whereas home fires kill more than 2,720 people in the United States in 2022, according to the U.S. Fire Administration and fire departments in the United States, responded to 374,300 home fires. And whereas cooking is the leading cause of home fires in the United States and fire departments, responded to more than 178,600 annually between 2013 and 2022. And whereas two of every five home fires start in the kitchen, with 31% of these fires resulting from unattended cooking, and more than half of reported non-fatal home cooking fire injuries occurred when the victim tried to fight the fire themselves. And whereas children under five face a higher risk of non-fire burns associated with cooking than being burned in a cooking fire. Residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires almost in half. And whereas the city of Okoy first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. Whereas the city of Okoy residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas as October is fire prevention month, we find it appropriate to recognize all that Okoy fire department does to protect our community, both now and throughout its illustrious history in the city of Okoy. Whereas the 2024 Fire Prevention Month theme, cook and safe, safety starts with you. Pay attention to fire prevention, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, the City Commission of the City of Okoy does hereby proclaim October 2024 as Fire Prevention Month through out the city, and I urge all people of the city of Okoy to check their kitchens for fire hazards and use safe cooking practices during Fire Prevention Month 2024. And join me in thanking our firefighters, staff, past and present, for their service and dedication to our community. Their tremendous skill, bravery, and compassion in difficult circumstances does not go unnoticed, and we appreciate all they do to keep our community safe. In witness whereof I had the mayor affix the seal of the city of Okoy, Florida, this first day of October 2024. All right, come on up front. Bring on Sparky up. 
All right, everybody up here, get together. Let's stand up behind them and. Oh, good. We got somebody taking pictures. We got Tim right here. Nope. Okay. All right. But come on in, guys. Yeah, that's perfect. I like that. I can't see. Yeah, it's, it's, thank you. I, I always tell Tim to get my good side. Whoops. There you go. There you go. I got over. There you go. You got there. Got it ready? All right. All right. Stand by. I'll take a couple here. First one. Okay. All right. Anyone else have pictures of cameras they need to take? Oh, did you get this? <laughs> no, that's all right. Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you, all. Thank you. Thank all you. The people. Thank you. You left some of those back to me. Yeah. <laughs> you kicked us right up. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Staff report. Uh, nothing at this time. Who could do? All right. We have a um, couple of public comments to go with the first part here. It's um, either Gina or Mike Sorrento. Are they here? I'm here. Mike? No, Gina. Okay. She's here. Mike's I know. I said Mike? you have three minutes. Mike. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. I'm going to talk fast. And that, okay. uh, you'll get into that microphone where it says public, oh. please, because then we can This one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, to all city commissioners, please be advised that these concerns are not the options, opinions of residents of Sleepy Harbor neighborhood, only the concerns of a Florida resident for over, thir for over 50 years that has lived in East Orlando and currently residing in Ocoee. I want to remind all of you that in the year 2019, quite a few Ocoee residents attended commission meeting that included the agenda item relating to the continuation of services of an environmental engineering company tasked with commencing with the plan to improve water quality of lakes Prima Vista and Stark Lake. At that time, I had the opportunity to address all of you with my concerns regarding the scientific data that resides on the University of Florida's Lake Watch program. Based on my research, it was concluded that both lakes were progressively getting worse. I compared data on Lake Apopka and it was considered that Lake Apopka was in better health than our two lakes in Ocoee. At this same meeting, I specifically asked the city engineer what the primary cause was of the nutrient loading was creating was created by, and he stated, quote, it was from agricult agricultural sources. Please note, unquote, please note that this statement was recorded in the minutes of the specific meeting, and unfortunately, I was not able to uh, attach a copy of this meeting, of this exhibit, as I am currently out of town on business. I have attached two aerial photographs that show Stark Lake Lake Prima Vista, Lake Apopka, and Lake Olympia. Please be advised that Lake Olympia has points of stormwater that discharge into the lake. Can you see the definitive pea soup color of Stark Lake's Prima Vista and Apopka? We all know that the downfall of Lake Apopka was due to the nutrient overload from agricultural practices for many years. After this meeting, Woods Engineering volunteered to speak to members of the Sleepy Harbor Condominium Complex. I and a couple other people from Sleepy Harbor residents attended as well. At this meeting, I specifically asked one of the engineers if there was a possibility that the nutrient level levels could be exponentially increased as the west 
Blueberry Farm was pumping lake from lake was pumping water from Lake Prima Vista and uh, to supply. I'm terribly sorry. I'm very nervous to supply their irrigation system for the blueberry plants. The answer he gave was yes. It shall be understood that this was not an official meeting and minutes were not recorded. Now, after five years, I am aware that the city's performing Foslock treatment, which is only a very short-term solution, and now the plan is to plant additional plant materials to help lower the nutrient level. My question to all of you is, when will the city address the main contributor of the nutrients in our lakes, which is the blueberry farm? Woods Engineering has pro provided recommendations in their reports that would alleviate some of these nutrients. I was recently reminded that the property is under Orange County zoning. When will the city approach the county with mine and other concerns so, the Orange, so that Orange County can assist with funding to clean up our lakes? Please advise as soon as possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Krug, you come up, please. I would like to make a... I would, oh. I would also, if you don't... Ma'am, ma wait a minute, you got to wait. Uh, okay. Real quick before Steve starts, I would like to make a bet with anybody in here that Lake Apopka is way worse than any two lakes we got in this town. Who, who come up with that suggestion? But they're out of their mind. You Ma'am, you've had your talk, okay? Let me finish with this. Okay. Okay, you can't talk from the audience. Okay? So I, I will tell you that you'd like to go over there and go swimming in Lake Apopka? Go right ahead. You can swim in these lakes. These lakes are nothing like Lake Apopka. It's not, and I'll, I'll tell you another thing that gets on me. Fish Lake is Fish Lake. That's Lake Olympia. Deep Lake is the other lake. So I don't know where these names changed after 100 years, but they did for some reason, but I don't understand that. Okay, Mr. Krug, will you explain to us? Sure, I'll, um, being brief with Afghani Technical, Steve Krug, Public Works Director. I was at the meetings too. Um, we'd like, I'd love to say the Blueberry Patch is the only agricultural source. There's no real treatment around the entire lake aside from the portion of Admiral Point subdivision that is on the um, on Stark Lake itself. We've taken it, it's gonna take a long, a few years to get everything squared away um, so that there's pre-treatment before like we're Sleepy Harbor, um, neighborhood and all, the water just drains off the roads right into the lake. There's no treatment to keep nutrients and things out. Um, not just um, the blueberry farm, but all the, you know, anybody that puts fertilizer, any septic systems around the entire lake have an impact. There's large upland areas, which um, one of the positive things which we're testing, where um, our Unity Park that we just completed last year, we've done pre and start and post testing, and the initial results are showing that we are reducing the nutrients enter entering the lake from there. It's gonna take a while for all this to change. We are, item number four on the agenda tonight, is the next treatment in this Florida DEP requirement to improve the lakes. We're working with Florida DEP to get the lakes back where they need to be. Um, it does take a little time. It's not immediate because it, it took time to get there. Lake Prima Vista, if you look at the history, was just barely above being impaired. It's never been a great lake. It's a small lake, unfortunately, that acts more like a bowl, and the only outlet is going into Stark Lake. And we're just treating everything we can, and as doing the most cost-effective things to start. I'd love to be able to hit everything, including doing some things at the Blueberry Patch, but there's costs, there's certain costs you just can't do, but we're, we're doing everything we need to in order to maintain the lake levels. Steve, if Mayor, a um, couple things real quick on that. Um, as with the case with Lake Apopka, we had decades of agricultural buildup dating, predating the Clean Water Act and the Environmental Protection Act, and I believe that to be the case here. It was, there were no regulations for orange growers and things like that. And there were a lot of groves in the area and we didn't have laws to regulate them. And I believe there was a 
tremendous amount of accumulation in that water body as well as Stark Lake um, that has now led to what's happening. Um, Steve, can you mention again the coordination that's being done with Orange County and any other agencies? We are, we're a co-permittee with Orange County um, on the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. So we work with them to make sure everything we do is to eliminate um, nutrients and materials going into lakes. We're required, there's a lot of unfunded federal mandates that the city is fortunate to have the stormwater fee that we can apply to that. So we're actually able to do things where the county can't, but we do work hand in hand with the county on these things. All right. Commissioner Wilson has something. I want to say something. I just want to make the announcement that um, I've talked to Mr. Smarito about this. And just for anyone who wants to know, it is item four on the agenda tonight if you're confused as to what the discussion item is. So if you want to refer to it. Also, there was a letter written to us, and it will be part of the public record. It does have pictures. So if anyone wants to go further with what was said, that the pictures are, are will be on the public. They're already in the public record for anyone to see. Okay. So they will... Just, I just want to clarify that. Just, it was item four, and they will. The pictures will be in the public record, correct, Melanie? Yeah, they go in. They go in because they and were sent to us. And, and they, we and they were sent to us. Yeah, we can, we can get those. Oh, from ho, 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 ho. Matt, you can come up and make that statement if you want to at the, at the mic, because that's where it records what you're saying. It was more, I was I'd say it. Okay. You have to get to the microphone because no one can okay. hear you. And we'd be happy to meet with anybody again if yeah. they want. I was very, I mean, I have two copies. But I was very surprised to see, if you look at Stark Lake and you look at Lake Olympia. Oh, we're well aware. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's frightening. I wouldn't go in this, and I live there. That's why right. we're working to repair it. But it, it takes time. It didn't get that way overnight, and it's going to take time to get it right. And, and the question is, if it's Orange County property All right. that's adding to the problem, can't we? We talked to Orange County. The main, they're not the only. The majority of the properties bordering are the city, in the city, and there's no treatment there either. They might want to make a comment. Um, between septic systems, we have, a, we have in, huh? implemented a... Uh, the city of commission approved a um, fertilizer ordinance because of the amount of nutrients it puts into the lake. Steve, you have to address us, both her and you. That's no enough. Go ahead. I'm going to let Commissioner Oliver. I'm good. I'm going to make Commissioner Oliver make some, wants to make a comment. Just a quick comment. Uh, in according to what you were saying, Steve, and um, we, we have other lakes as well that, that have the same issue where we have these static water basins. And I've had the opportunity to look at some of those lakes uh, through the years. Uh, and uh, Steve, I know you we have a relationship with St. John Water Management District. They have pr programs that, that we are part of that are designed for long term. They look at it on the long term to figure out how we decrease these nutrients in our lakes. So it's not something that we're just, we're just figuring it out. It's something that's been around for a while. And these programs are in place right now. They've been in place for quite some time now. And it leads us into the future as to how do we uh, tackle the, these issues that you're talking about tonight. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, all that goes into public records. Every bit, everything you turned in will be in the public records and the letter. I read it today before I came tonight, so it's, it's, all, it's on our uh, phone. All right. Other public comments of Mr. Moyer. Dr. Moyer, I'm sorry. My name's Dr. Jim Moyer. I live in Arden Park. I just wanted to... Sorry. Thank you, Mary. As the city recognized, I believe it was at the last meeting, they did a proclamation for Hispanic Heritage Month. And I just want to make a few comments in regard to that. When I have discussion with people about Hispanic Heritage Month, what always comes up is, why is it September 15th to October 15th? Well, the answer is, it was originally a week-long celebration initiated by President Johnson. And the reason that they chose the week beginning September 15th is five Central American 
countries have their Independence Day on September 15th. And then Mexico begins their independence time the next day, September 16th. And Chile has their Independence Day in, on September 18th. But then President Reagan wanted to expand it to the month, so it made sense to go from September 15th to October 15th. For one reason, because it includes Columbus Day, which is celebrated um, many parts of Latin America. And um, I would just like everyone to join all of us in celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month that includes the United States, which is the second largest Spanish-speaking country in the world behind Mexico, and South America, Central America, Mexico, here, and parts of the Caribbean, Cuba, which is the largest Caribbean island, uh, Hispaniola, which is, includes uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti, which is the most populated island, and of course, Puerto Rico. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Mori. Doug Gomer? Gomer? Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Doug Gomber. I live at 405 Misty Meadow Drive. Um, I've been watching the agenda for the last two weeks, and I just want to get an update on the contentious meeting we had about the golf course. Uh, a month ago, and I was just wondering if there's an update that the citizens can hear on where we stand on the negotiations there. Mr. City Attorney, are you prepared? I could tell you that we still have not received any of the documents that we've been requesting for months and months and months. I'll leave it at that. Is that the answer you would? Need anything else? All right, consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson to approve. To hear a second? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Kennedy. Any more comments? No more comments? Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, we go down to the first reading of the ordinances. After the first reading, the, su the second reading will be two weeks. What is it? The 15th of October for the public hearings. All right. Read those, then I'll read them. All right, an ordinance. This is um, an update to Section 5 3 of our Code of Ordinances regarding qualifications of candidates. An ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending Section 5 3 of the Code of the City of a COE pertaining to the proof required for meeting the one-year residency requirement for candidates for the offices of mayor and city commissioner, establishing that candidates must consent to a background check to verify their residency as required by the city charter and qualification to hold office under Article 6, Section 4 of the Florida Constitution, for elections to be held in March, establishing the qualifying period for candidates for the offices of mayor and city commissioner between noon on the first Friday in December until noon on the second Friday in December, and authorizing the City Commission to set any other five business day qualifying periods by resolution. That will be read again October the 15th, and public comments will be had. You want to read number six now? Yes, I will. Ordinance uh, uh, that would amend Section 11-1 of the City's Code of Ordinances. An ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending Section 11-1 of the City of Ocoee Code of Ordinances revising the start time for regular city commission uh, meetings, I should say, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. All right, that's it. All right, now we're at the, uh, that will also be October the 15th for the public hearing. All right, second. Uh, second reading of ordinance, the public hearings. Number seven, second reading of ordinance amending Article 2, Chapter 51 of the Code of Ordinances 
creating local technical amendments to the Florida Building Code. Acting Assistant City Manager Rumor. Thank you, Mayor. First, I'd like to introduce to you an employee of ours, Tori Parrish. Tori is the urban designer with the City of Ocoee. She's a licensed architect, and she's a valuable, talented uh, addition to our staff. She's been with us a couple months now. She will be tag-teaming me with this. Welcome, Tori, to you guys. The uh, ordinance before you today is a second reading, and it's an ordinance to adopt, uh, it's to create the uh, requirement, the regulation, that on future multifamily development uh, developments within the city of Ocoee, any habitable space on the first floor, it requires, uh, this ordinance will require uh, alternative materials to provide for better construction and durability on, on the, that type of construction. And so with that, I will turn it over to Tori and she will describe the ordinance and then the next step from here. Thank you. Do we lose our slides? Oh, I gotta do that, I'm sorry. So the ordinance amendment creates a technical amendment to the Florida Building Code. Uh, so um, as Mike already presented, we're gonna look at load bearing walls on the first floor and exterior ground floor walls. This is gonna lead to more sustainable and durable, durable buildings for, um, they're gonna give us better long-term maintenance on buildings and create an opportunity for easier ground floor conversions. And then I'm happy to talk about any of the next features uh, because I've, I've done an in-depth look at each material and I've also uh, confirmed these with our chief building official, but just to kind of give you bullet points, uh, resistance to fire, mold and rot resistance, termite prevention, improved durability, strength and maintenance, improved sound transmission, better sustainability and health, and then the accommodation of a variety of exterior building materials. That's what concrete, CMU, and metal framing will give you. So as I said, this creates a technical amendment to the Florida Building Code. And so this is the actual technical language and the reference code. So where that amendment is inserted, we don't need to read that unless you want to. Um, and then process-wise, if this is approved tonight, then the chief, of the chief building official, Doug Hammond, will submit the ordinance amendment, the technical language, and all other materials to the Florida Building Commission who will then approve, or well, they'll review and public, pub, for review and publication. And then we're recommending adoption. Yeah, so this will provide for, once you mentioned the conversion, that allows you to potentially convert it to a non-residential use uh, by using the block CMU steel. So you will not have the wood stick structures on the first floor habitable area. We're available for any questions, thank you. All right, you want to read? We'll read these and then I'll open the public hearing. In ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, amending Article 11, Chapter 51 of the City of Ocoee Code of Ordinances, creating local technical amendments to the Florida Building Code, creating a new Section 51-20, requiring masonry, block, metal, or concrete exterior and interior load-bearing walls in certain structures, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for an effective date. Is that the only one you want to read? on this one. Okay. All right, I'll open the public hearing for uh, Article 2, Chapter 51 of the Code of Orders to Create Local Technical Amendments to the Florida Building Code. Anybody in the public have any comments? All right, I'll close it, come back to the dais. Anybody up on the dais have any comments? All right, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Kennedy to hear a second. I'll oh, second that. Seconded by Commissioner Firstner. Any more comments? If not, let's vote. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to number eight. Second reading of ordinances for the shops on the bluff, small scale comprehensive plan, future land use map amendment, and rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Give me that. So this is an application for a small-scale complex amendment and corresponding rezoning from R1AA to PUD. Um, it's in the northeast area of Clark and Clark County Coe Road, about 400 feet from the intersection. It's just over four acres in size. It's currently vacant and wooded. Um, this is an aerial of the property. The surrounding future land use designation map and the surrounding zoning map. Um, this is the site plan. Um, that they are wanting to do. So basically it's a um, two, two plazas, less than 25,000 square feet in size, consisting of retail and restaurant uses. 
Um, this is the proposed landscaping plan. This uh, rezoning also includes a waiver to the um, requirements for the minimum perimeter building um, requirements to have less perimeter building landscaping in order to create a more pedestrian environment um, for the plaza. So staff looked at it in terms of the square footage. We looked at open space requirements, parking requirements, setbacks, um, transportation, and uh, utilities. Um, we also looked at it with respect to the uh, West Orange Trail requirements, the consistency with the comprehensive plan, um, and the Wakaiva requirements for minimum 35% open space set aside. Uh, DRC considered this item at its July 30th meeting and made a recommendation of approval subject to a few conditions. Um, those conditions have been met when they went into the PCC meeting. At the PCC, um, the PCC met and on September 10th and made a recommendation of approval subject to the condition that the tattoo parlors and um, smoke vape shops and those types of uses be included in the not included uses list. And with that, staff is recommending approval of the comp plan amendment and rezoning. Thank you. All right. Great. An ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, amending article two, chapter 51 of the city of Ocoee code of ordinances. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. An ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, amending the city of Ocoee comprehensive plan as adopted in 1991, as amended, amending the future land use map of the ECOE Comprehensive Plan to change the future land use map designation from low density residential to commercial for certain real properties containing approximately 4.29 acres located on the north side of Clarcona Ocoee Road, beginning approximately 400 feet east of the North Clark Road at Clarcona Ocoee Road intersection, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city future land use map prevailing in the event of any inconsistency, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, and then I also need to read the rezoning one. An ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from R1AA, single family dwelling district, to PUD, planned unit development district. Uncertain real properties containing approximately 4.29 acres located on the north side of Clarcona Ocoee Road, beginning approximately 400 feet east of the North Clark Road at Clarcona Ocoee Road intersection, finding said zoning to be consistent with Okoe Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, prevailing in the event of any inconsistency, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. We need to do it Let's do it separate. All right, I'm gonna open the public here. May anybody have any comments on uh, item eight in the public? Don't forget, Mike, come on up, John. Mr. Bass, I'm sorry. John's all right. First of all, I think it's a bad idea to put that there. Think of how many accidents we have right now on Clarecona O'Coy Road and Clark Road. They killed one the other night. We had three accidents Monday night, and they have them every night. And when they put this in there, they're going to have more problems. That's about all I got to say. But I, I, there's one little thing that doesn't have anything to do with that that I want to say that uh, Lake Apopka is one of the best fishing lakes there is around. It's I always been. I ain't been there since today, and I caught a bunch of fish, I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Anybody else have any comments on the public comments? All right. We're going to close the public hearing and bring it back up to the dais. I need a motion. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Commissioner Oliver. Do we hear a second? I'm second. Seconded by Commissioner Firstner. All right, let's vote. <clears throat> motion carries unanimous. I want to make a couple comments, John, about I talked to you the other night at our reunion about that. I, I will tell you that the wrecks are down below you. I know, I know where you live at. The wrecks are at that corner where that red light's at. Most of them are all right there that happened. The main, the, the main problem, I think, is the design wrong to start with. Coming around, coming from Ingham Road back to that, it's a bad design. In the county, that's the county's responsibility, and I have told Co Commissioner Moore time and time again about it to go look at it and see if they could do anything. They haven't done anything. But that's where the problem, I think, is coming in. 
they come around that blind side because it kind of turns and comes around in there. Nobody sees it. They're pulling across the road, even with the light, and that's where the bricks are happening. Now, I'm not the engineer, but I have called Commissioner Moore and turned that in and asked her to do, address that, but they haven't done it yet. All right. Yeah. I, I think we might need two motions, or we need... We do. Yes. We did. That was the first one. I that just wanted to say it. Yeah. We got now... You want to read the... You read that. Already. I rewrite it. All right. So we need a motion now on the zoning. I'll make that motion. Mr. Oliver, Commissioner Oliver makes that motion. There's a second. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Wilson. I have a comment. Okay. I want to make sure that we include the conditions. Mm. Yeah. The should. motion needs to be conditioned as recommended not to include tattoo establishments, smoke, vape, and tobacco shops, and other like mm -hmm. establishments. I agree. I, I make that motion uh, on the condition that we um, uphold the the standing conditions of not having smoke shops or vape yeah. shops yeah. and um, what was the other? Uh, a tattoo parlors. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Do we get a second? Yeah, yes. I will second it by Commissioner Wilson. You got a comment? No, no. I agree okay. with Okay. Let's vote. Mission, mission, uh, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. Public hearings. Item number nine. Approval of one Taylor Street right of way vacation. Vacate. Project number VAC 24-36, concurrency, concurrency and commitment coordinator, Ms. McFarland. Mayor, I just wanted to introduce Brett. He had been on some past staff reports, but I ended up taking over the item for him. So I just realized you haven't formally met him today. Brett's our concurrency commitment coordinator, kind of our planning guy, and he's presenting this case to you. That's <clears throat> Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, tonight we're bringing for your approval the adoption of a resolution that would be abandoning yeah. and vacating unimproved public right-of-way uh, located north of 1 Taylor Street. A bit of background, this is a city-initiated right-of-way vacation. Um, the right-of-way is currently unimproved, and after discussions with staff, the city has no plans to improve the right-of-way. Um, and in our typical process of notifying all public utilities, the city received no objections from all applicable utility companies. Uh, this is a marked survey showing the area uh, that is to be vacated. This is a, a location map just showing the streets um, in the proximity to the, to the right of way. And this is an aerial image just giving you a better picture of it. With that in mind, staff is recommending uh, that the city commission approve a resolution abandoning and vacating the unimproved public right-of-way located north of 1 Taylor Street. Thank you. All right. Read. Yes. A resolution of the city of Ocoee, Florida, abandoning and vacating an unimproved public right-of-way northwest <coughs> one quarter of the southeast one quarter of Section 18, Township 22 South, Range 28 East, lying southerly of the southerly line of lots 8 and 9. Block 1 is shown on the plat of the map of Ocoee as recorded in Plat Book A, pages 100 and 101, and is also shown the plat of Sims Subdivision of Ocoee, as recorded in Plat Book F, page 126 of the public records of Orange County, Florida, lying easterly of Taylor Street and lying westerly of the railroad right-of-way, providing for recordation, providing for severability, providing an effective date. All right, I'm going to open the public hearing. Anybody have any comments on item nine, approval of one Taylor Street right of way vacation? None. I will close it and bring it back to the dots. Anybody have any comments? I just have a quick question. Um, I've actually read read this, this this ordinance. I only have one question since since we are the applicant to take over that 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 land. Uh, what would be the future use for for us? Since it's so close to our downtown, what would be the future use for that that particular plot of land, uh, Commissioner? After the vacation, the property appraiser will assign. They'll do research on who, which half of the property, or where the property goes. It goes back to where it originally came from. It will be adjoined to the parcel we bought at One Taylor Street. It will add to that. Uh, we anticipate 50-50, but we don't know. It may be all of it. It'll be absorbed by that parcel? It, it was rezoned when the commission approved a, uh, the land transaction with the, the one Taylor Street property. 
it was all rezoned subsequent uh, to that to commercial, um, where it, whereas it was, I believe it was a light industrial prior to that. So um, we had a goal of keeping it a more downtown use and light industrial is not really a downtown use. So it's, it would be office commercial. Yeah, that, that was, that was, that answers my question perfectly. Yeah. I just want to know how it's going to tie into our downtown. Absolutely. Vision. Okay. All right. I need a motion. Make that motion. Motion uh, for number nine is by Commissioner Wilson. Do we hear a second? No second that. Seconded by Commissioner Furster. No more comments. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right, item number 10, approval of hometown studios, special exception. Mayor and commissioners, uh, we are bringing this item um, for your consideration tonight. It's a request for a special exception approval for a hot hotel use um, on certain property, uh, specifically parcel ID 06-22-28-0000-0001. Uh, that is currently zoned um, as a commercial PUD with the land use plan specifying C2 uses. A bit of background about the property. Um, it is located on the south side of West Road. It's approximately 775 feet east of the intersection of West Road and Okoyapopka Road. Uh, the subject parcel is 3.71 acres in size and is a part of the Lady Bird Academy PUD. Uh, it currently has a commercial future land use um, and it is vacant with shared stormwater access uh, and drive access with Lady Bird Academy. These are some aerials showing the property as well as the future land use map uh, showing the subject property and surrounding properties as well as the surrounding zoning map. I just want to make a quick note. The property to the south is the West Orange Trail um, and to the south of that is property that is shown as R1A. However, this property is owned by the Central Florida Highway Express Authority and has very little chance of being developed as residential. Now, the code requires that we bring this item uh, before you uh, according to Table 5-1 um, of the Permitted Use Regulations. As you can see, for property that is zoned C2, uh, it is required to receive a special exception for a hotel or motel use. And the special exception criteria that we are looking at um, when staff uh, reviews these is uh, three specifically, with the first being whether the proposed uh, use or structure um, would violate the comprehensive plan or land development code. Um, the second being whether the proposed use or structure is compatible with surrounding uh, properties, their uses and structures and activities. And the third being whether the proposed use or structure um, would not, uh, would not be in violation of the health, safety, welfare, and convenience of those residing, working, or owning land in the vicinity, specifically looking at density, bulk, overcrowding of land or buildings, um, traffic issues, fire, safety, um, noise, odor, glare, vibrations, or the ability of surrounding property owners to uh, use their property legally. Um, I do want to make a quick note. That the applicant is here with us tonight, and uh, today we were notified that um, they were seeking to make some changes to the special exception um, and to the to the use, specifically regarding the branding. Um, it was submitted with the intent of it being um, part of the home hometown studios brand. The applicant has notified us that they are seeking to change the branding, I believe, to a Holiday Inn Express or a Holiday Inn Express. Um, uh, Candlewood's uh, studio combo uh, hotel. These are some conceptual images that were provided to us of the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I do have the uh, conceptual images and site plan that were submitted with the um, original submission if, if you would like to look at those. Um, but this is what the applicant is intending to move forward with um, regarding this. Um, here's some other elevations. <coughs> Um, with that in mind, uh, staff found that uh, looking at the three criteria, that uh, looking at the first one, that the proposed use and structure would not be in violation of the land development code or the comprehensive plan. Um, we did, staff did identify 0 0.81 acres of possibly impacted wetlands on the property. Um, the applicant has been notified of this and this will be handled at time of site plan review. Um, Second, looking at the compatibility with surrounding properties, um, their uses and structures, the 
uh, staff found that the proposed use and structure of a hotel would be compatible with the uses and structures and activities on adjacent or nearby land. And finally, um, looking specifically at the health, safety, welfare, and convenience of surrounding properties, um, staff did find that the use would be um, in compliance with sections 4-8B, 3A through G of the Land Development Code, which uh, discusses those. Um, the DRC considered this item at its July 30th meeting, and uh, the DRC recommended approval subject to the conditions that uh, the rear landscape buffer adjacent to the West Orange Trail on the south side of the property be further looked at at the time of site plan review, as well as any impacted uh, wetlands on the property. Um, the PCC uh, considered this item at, at its September 30th meeting. Um, during the hearing, there were discussions specific to the health, safety, welfare, um, and convenience of surrounding properties. Um, there were comments from the members of the general public as well as the board. Um, following those discussions, the BCC made a recommendation of denial uh, on a four to one vote. And with that in mind, staff is recommending that the honorable mayor and city commissioners take action on one of three options uh, presented here um, for a special exception use, or for a special exception for a hotel use on the subject property. The first being um, approval of the special exception with conditions. Those conditions uh, could include things such as uh, limiting the maximum duration of stay for uh, guests at the hotel, um, setting a minimum rate structure, um, and uh, other things such as amenities. The second option would be an outright denial of the special exception. And the third would be continuing the item to a future date uh, with or without um, a date certain. Um, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions from the commission and the applicant is here tonight as well. All right. You got anything to read? All right, I'm gonna open the public hearing. Anybody in the public? I'm gonna, I'll let you talk first and then I'll bring the public up, okay? Good evening. As has been stated, the ownership has contacted Holiday Inn and they are changing the brand. It's not a question at this point for this site. Um, that change will result in Stop. Prox. Give us your name and who oh, you are. Oh, I'm sorry, Russell Maynard, Central Florida Engineering Consultants, 1111 North Ronald Reagan Avenue, Longwood, Florida, 32750. All right. But the, uh, the change in brand would result in a uh, lessening of the rooms. It would be about 110 or so rooms as opposed to the 124, I believe it is now. Um, and with that, uh, I leave it to you. And if I can rebut any of the public comments. All right, I'm going to open it up now. I have one forum here for Kelly Beck. You get five minutes. Good evening, my name is Kelly Beck. I am a resident of the city of Okoye and president of the Greens at Forest Lake Homeowners Association. I have several members of my community and fellow board members here as well with me tonight. We are encouraging the city of Okoye and the commissioners to choose option two and deny the special exception. We have a lot of concerns about this. Um, I understand they're changing the brand, but I believe you said it was a Holiday Inn Express in combination with Candlewood Studio which from a quick Google search is still an extended stay property. That's where we have a concern. Um, there were two reasons to go against this, right? The first was its compatibility with nearby properties. This is a residential area. We have a Publix across the street. We have a daycare adjacent to this property. We have an elementary school across the street. You have the West Orange Trail going behind it where you have community members such as myself out biking and walking every day where you have high schoolers taking the trail to get to Okoe High School daily, and you're proposing putting a property that routinely is known for high crime rates, transient populations, drug abuse, any of the properties that are extended stay motels that you pull the court records on within Orange County have eviction notices all the time. This isn't just a normal hotel. This is something that's going to bring a very different dynamic into the community. And that's where we have concerns is whenever we have people that are staying in our community over an extended time that are in a residential area with 
possibly nothing more to do because they're finding these low income housing is what it unfortunately is replacing within our community because of the ongoing housing crisis. So right off the bat, I don't see it as being compatible with the adjacent and nearby communities, especially speaking to my community, which is the uh, Fountains West PUD directly across the street from this. Additionally, to the point of the safety and welfare number three, this is an issue. When you're bringing in transient populations, unfortunately, many of them do suffer with drug addiction and with mental health. It is a crisis in our country, but now you're placing that sharing a driveway with a daycare center. You have a four-story building overlooking that. They're known for having issues with sex trafficking in these types of, of properties. And again, you're sharing that property with the daycare. You're across the street from an elementary school. You're backing it up against a trail where women walk alone and bike and skate and where kids are going to high school on a daily basis. This is a legitimate concern for our community in granting them this exception that you're not meeting the criteria that were outlined. Um, there's other properties like the Shops on the Bluff that went to reading tonight that nobody spoke against. We're excited about those types of developments. They're talking about a dentist office and a coffee shop with a patio on that property. That adds value to our community. That gives residents third spaces to gather, to communicate, and to build a community. This does not contribute to building a community, and I would argue is a detriment to our community. So I encourage you to vote no and deny the special exception. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wait, I got one more. Mr. Lumner. It's a long walk. <clears throat> there, please. Brad Lomniak, Veronica Place. I voted no originally on this. Uh, I wrote, voted no to recommend no for this project when it came. Uh, the the gentleman that uh, brought it up, you know. Did, it, was, it was an extended stay right till the last two seconds, then it was not gonna be an extended stay. So if this were to be approved in any way, there would need to be conditions that the if the flag were to ever change to an extended stay, a true extended stay property, that that would not be allowed anymore. So the these people can change flags on their hotels from Holiday Inn to Homewood anytime they want. So if... Uh, you know, if this is a ruse to get the, the project approved and then changed, we should put some considerations in there. So thank you. All right. That's all the, anybody else in the public have any comments? All right, you can come back up and make your comments back. Russell Maynard for the applicant again. Um, we are proposing either or and if the extended stay of the Candlewood is truly a problem, then it would just be a Holiday Inn Express. And we'll drop the, the, the portion of it that would be extended stay. It would be a small number of rooms. But if that's the concern, I've done research on the web. I, did, I haven't found any issues with hotels. But we're at your leisure. Thank you. All right. Um, commissioners? Um, I'm going to, in the end, make a motion for option two to deny the special exception um, for many of the reasons noted. I, I really dislike, and I think there's a problem uh, when we have a process and someone submits what they plan to do and they go to the DRC and we, at great expense, evaluate their plans and comment on their plans, and then they go to P&Z and we do the same thing and we have citizens come and address what is noticed as the plan in the public and take their time to speak and our P&Z volunteers and takes their time to evaluate that plan and comment and vote. And then it comes to the commission, and I'm, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what your authority is as a managing member of the engineering consulting firm, um, but this is, in my opinion, the totally wrong forum to have a verbal negotiation at 1159 
and well, maybe we'll do this, or maybe we'll do that. There's a process in place to inform the residents and to allow them to comment. And I think when you keep moving, playing hide the marble, um, I just think that's fundamentally wrong. Um, and I hope at some point staff can do something about this process and clean it up. Um, I think if you want to change your plan or whoever you represent wants to change their plan, go change your plan and resubmit, pull this plan. But I'm not, I'm not here, I don't think any of us here, we have professional staff who are the smartest people in the room. It's not us. And uh, there's a process, there's a long, this has a long, I heard there were meetings July 30th, September 30th. There's a long runway for a reason. And it's a good reason. And it involves our community. It gives them an opportunity to, to have a voice. So for that reason, also I want to say, even if we were to put conditions on, there is absolutely no way at this time for the city to regulate and manage operational requirements like that. That's just a non-starter in my view. So um, with that, I guess I'll let other people make comments, but I do intend to make a motion to deny the special exception. Let's get to the comments. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm no. probably not going to go over any further. I think I agree mostly with what you have said, and the concern I have is that I listen to what I believe we need to listen to what our residents have to say that are, it's very important and um, the concern I have is if you approve something what happens three months down the road that's and how we can't monitor that so I will probably be following your lead Mr. Kennedy Thank you. Commissioner Furster what is the definition of extended stay what is the period involved that makes a hotel <coughs> extended stay Typically, it's. But, yeah. By code, we don't have a definition to provide you. We just have one for a hotel. So we do not have a land development code to provide you for a definition on duration of stay and whatnot. So okay. it would just be an industry type definition. Okay. And under those circumstances that uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Kennedy, <clears throat> it's not up to the city to determine that. Uh, and and start uh, putting exceptions in there or, or putting conditions in there that limit it or or extend it I uh, I'm just going to say that uh, I vote for option two and you can bring that back as a, a regular hotel and we'll consider it then but uh, the exceptions have got to be built into uh, the project to begin with, not added on as we go. Okay, Commissioner Oliver. <clears throat> Me personally, I'm, I'm a fan of um, IHG and um, um, uh, Holiday Inn Express. I've stated many of them. Um, right now, I'm probably sitting at 150,000 points in IHG. So I, I spend a lot of time in hotels as I used to travel. But um, so the brand, I'm familiar with the brand. It, it is a um, it is a it's a brand for business travelers. You find a lot of them near hotel, a lot of those that brand near um, airports uh, where you're in and out. Uh, so uh, when I saw that the name changed, I got the memo here just at the at the ninth hour. The eighth, I'm sorry, the eleventh hour. Um, I see that it changed to Holland Express in combination. So, so I'm a fan of that. Um, however, uh, um, I, I was listening to the comment of Mr. Lomnick, and, and, and he, he made a, a great, excellent point about how, how, you, how we can pivot. I just, just got this memo, 11th hour. And if we're able to do that, then what happens if we were to uh, change brands uh, uh, in, in the middle of this thing here? You're up six months, and then all of a sudden, now it's an extended stay. I am also familiar with extended stay hotels, and they're not the most desirable hotels at all. They do incur uh, transit uh, behaviors, uh, transit uh, folks that are there. Um, sometimes you have sometimes you have folks that, that just have nowhere else to go. They can kind of panhandle during the day and stay at a, at a extended stay at night. And in the area that, that we're in, that particular area, um, it does not fit the aesthetics of, of that type of brand of hotel. 
Uh, when you look at the areas around it, it just does not, it's just not a good fit. Uh, so in my opinion, I have to agree with the rest of the commission when it comes to that type of, of, of hotel. Now, if you want to bring it back to uh, becoming uh, some other type of hotel that is just not an extended stay, um, I, I would definitely look at that. But I do believe that this is also an excellent um, uh, opportunity for us to look at uh, what we talked about, um, uh, our, our land development code. The question was, what defines an extended stay? The answer was, we do not have a definitive answer for that because our land development code does not cite that. Perfect reason why we actually created this six-month moratorium to sit down and look at our land development code to address issues just like this. So I think that this goes to prove our point as to why we need the moratorium and why we need this, this land development code to be changed. So that's my comments. Okay. I won't make a lot of more time on discussing it. I also will go with the no option two denying a special exception, which I think that's not the right place for it. And uh, I think that's what the city does not want to start. All right, I need a motion, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to deny the special exception. Motion's made to deny the special exception by Commissioner Kennedy to hear a second. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Wilson. Any more comments? Not let's vote. Do we vote yes to yes. deny? Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> motion carries unanimously to deny the exception. All right. I want to ask, is Mr. Thompson here? <clears throat> Chris Thompson? Nope. Okay. All right. Where are we at now? We're at regular agenda. <whistles> Centennial planning update and direction. Acting. I don't think that's acting anymore, is it? City manager? Assistant city Tomorrow. manager? Tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow. Today's the first. No, I... I I will be uh, determining that in the next oh. few days. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Oh. Okay, Mr. Acton. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> the, um, uh, at the July 16th, uh, 2024 City Commission meeting, the staff brought forward uh, the beginning uh, discussion on the centennial celebration uh, to include this commission approved uh, waiving purchasing requirements. We could uh, hire Crabtree Inc. to look at our logo and be creative to start uh, as a uh, marketing company. And those companies are under contract, we're under the new fiscal year, and we're ready to move forward with planning of the centennial. We've got three action items before you tonight, which we have uh, staff, talented staff, and very excited staff to be working on the centennial celebration. And we're going to be requesting some action on logos and murals and uh, time capsules. So with that, I'll turn it over to Joy Wright to discuss the logo options with you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Joy Porter Wright, Community Relations Manager. And I'm here to present to you tonight two options and concepts for our proposed Centennial 100-year celebration logo. We're very excited to bring you these concepts tonight. We've been working for uh, several months on this, and so I'm going to turn it here. You just use the clicker right here. Oh, okay. Okay, now. Oh, okay now. I'll just go right here. That other way. Okay, what you see here on the screen is uh, concept A. As Mike mentioned, we've been working with Andy Crabtree. He's with Crabtree Creative Inc. And a lot of you are familiar with him. He designed and created the city's logo. And he also designed and created the CRA logo, Community Redevelopment Agency logo. So we worked with him for several years. And so again, the committee, we're really excited to present this these two concepts to you. We've done some research and gone out to see what other cities and counties were presenting for their centennial celebration. So again, this is concept A, and what we were looking for and had been working with Andy to come up with a design that was a clean design that we 
plan to use on several different platforms, including the one that you see here, which is the poll banners. And so this is concept A, and we will use the Centennial logo, the 100 year celebration logo on several platforms, including poll banners, t-shirts, uh, city letterhead, social media, various promotional giveaways. So again, the Centennial logo 100 year celebration design 1925 to 2025 is really the centerpiece, centerpiece of the Centennial celebration. So we'd like to, again, present these to you. So this is concept A. And again, this is the clean design that we were looking for. If you look at the number 100, you will see how the actual city logo is incorporated into the number 100 and also incorporated into the number zero. So we wanted to have the same look and feel for the Centennial logo that we do have for the city's branding with the existing current city logo. This is concept B. This is a little more traditional, just in terms of the ribbon, the gold ribbon that you see there with the 100 years and the, year, the word years printed on that. So again, this is a little bit more tra traditional. And again, we're trying to focus on the design. And what you see here is, again, concept B, and you see the pole banners, and we will have vertical representations of the Centennial logo as well as horizontal. So again, here are both of the concepts, A and B. And again, what we're asking for you to do tonight, we're presenting these options to you and we're asking you to vote on the option that you prefer. All righty, commissioners. I'll say something. <clears throat> Personally, you know, when I was looking at it on, on my agenda, I didn't like concept B because it looked more orange, but now that you've said it was gold, I think it looks classier. Um, at home, when I looked and went orange, oh, didn't really know where that came from, but I think, I kind of, personally, I, looking at option B, I think is rather attractive. That's just my opinion, and looking out in the audience to see if anyone's, <laughs> they don't like either one, or. <laughs> right. Who else? I like B. You like B? I like I vote for B. <laughs> as long as it's not orange? I, li I like A because I <laughs> sometimes I think simple, the more simple, the more better. It just, you know, you see, like you see logos all the time. You I see. like A. Whichever one we do, we need to yeah. make sure them, the dates on the bottom show up better than what they do with yeah. that. A little larger? The larger on the years, 1925. Yeah. People like me can't see that good, so. Well, I hope on a banner that's that large you're going to have. Yeah, well, let's hope so. I hope. <laughs> All right, so I'm with, like I said, Commissioner Oliver, I'm, I like A, but I think um, we'll vote on it, and then, then we'll see. Does somebody make a motion? Somebody <laughs> make a motion. I have a comment. I'm not going to I have vote another comment, if I can. Okay. Uh, what I didn't like about A was the presentation was inconsistent. And on B, it was consistent. Everywhere it said 100, it said years. And on A, there's places where it just says 100 Ocoee, which is. Well, so, so. It says years underneath. It says years underneath. No, in, in the left hand corner, it just says 100. Yeah, but here's the one with pictures on it. It's got. Some say years and some say, some don't. Well, the pictures, and when we're doing 100 years, it says we're years. It doesn't but say. But that don't matter. It's going to be. The banner, it's going to be. Correct? This is just for yeah, the banner. We're, no, we're they said the logo. We're focusing the on the design concept. We always have, we'll have the ability to change the words if necessary, but we're really focusing on the design and asking you to vote on the design concept. Yeah, I think if we're going to vote, we need to be voting on exactly what we're going to get. Just my opinion. I mean, that's worthless. Well, it's not consistent. So I'm not liking A because it's poorly executed. I might like A if it was properly executed. Just my opinion. Are we talking like on a shirt, it would say the years would be in the gold banner? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at. Well, what is, is 100 years gold? Is that really <coughs> like, like, kind of like your wedding anniversary or <coughs> I think the color was just presented just in terms of something that was stand out <coughs> that would kind of pop. 
So it wasn't necessarily yeah. related to the 100 years, but you can look at it as the golden 100 years. All right. So I personally need a motion. I, I'll stretch out here and say I'm going to go with, I'll make the motion for out of the two, B. I'll second that. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson for item B, seconded by Commissioner Kennedy for item B. Any more comments? I will comment. I liked item A, but I'm going to vote for B. I'm not going to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that one, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, I like A. What am I going to tell you? There ain't no use to vote against it. We're going to have it, so I'm going to vote for it. Can't say I didn't vote for it. Let's vote. Well, we <laughs> <laughs> Remember those days? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you know which phase I'm talking about. Commissioner Oliver voted no. Way to hang in there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll dead. blame it on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, you got some more, don't you? We're going to keep going here. Okay. Future Crows Development Services, and I'm going to con continue to be excited tonight. Um, we have actually quite a few of the staff committees, um, and I volunteered to be on the Centennial Time Capsule um, marker and the location. And, and working with parks, so it was myself and Tori Parrish, who you met earlier, and Mark Johnson, and we kind of really took about an understanding when you look at a time capsule, whether that's buried or it's on top, you need to find a place that one has good visibility. Two, that it's not likely to change in the future of the 100 years from whence it's going to be open. As well as we wanted the opportunity for people to come and see it in more of a garden setting. So when we took a look at that, we kind of all gravitated to the grounds of the Withers McGuire House. It is our historic home, mm -hmm. it's our historic grounds. And so we said this would be a great location, good accessibility. We can actually add security <coughs> from a camera standpoint. Uh, on the house and looking at this component. So as staff, we felt this was the best location to be able to take a look at that. And around the house, we found the southeast uh, corner of the home, which you'll be seeing in a few minutes would be the best location. For one, not taken away from the memorials that are in front or from the, the frontage of the house itself, but to actually fit into the garden setting with that. We also started taking a look at, well, what are we gonna put in this time capsule? So we came up with a lot of different ideas that we're gonna be looking at doing, and we really do want the commission to hit some thoughts and let us know about some of their thoughts about putting in here. Anywhere from making sure you have a proclamation that goes in, to taking a look at our 2025 calendar, which will be a special calendar uh, that's focusing on the 100 years. Uh, asking the, the local high schools, or in elementary and the middle school, to perhaps tell us what the future is gonna be, and what is a COE gonna look like in 100 years? where they're having the students look forward to that or to tell them how what is their life about now to somebody that is 100 years in the present. So things like that, we do want to involve the community. We want to ask them that, what are their ideas to put into this time capsule so that we can work through this. We looked at menus perhaps. So there's a lot of things that can go in here. So we needed to take a look at how we're going to place them and what we're going to put them in. So um, we decided that in doing a lot of research, a time capsule that is buried or above ground needs to have a special type of seal to it. It needs to be protected over the 100 years. And there are companies that make time capsules specifically for lasting 100 years. And so we have a stainless steel, large rectangular shape that we found that would work in the locations for whence they then can be totally sealed, but it will be buried. So we are actually then developing a marker to go on top so that we can mark this area in the future. We found out during our research that a lot of times people have buried time capsules. They knew somewhere it's out there, but they lost them. So we need to be able to, to make a, a marker component of that. What we came up with the design and, and is really trying to, how can we speak to the future, but also the strong foundation of our past and our heritage. So again, in this area, the fault would be buried and on top of it we came up with this marker with the brick foundation of the bricks that come from the area of the Wither McGuire's house which, ha which we have but also then a concrete kind of oval obelisk that actually towards the front is like six inches high that kind of 
goes back reading up to eight inches high in the back, three feet. This is a pretty good size marker, so you're not going to miss it on the components of there. So concept A is very simple. It says 1925 to 2025, City of Kobe Centennial Time Council buried. 2025 to be open May 13th, 2125. Very simple. And the only change to the second one <clears throat> is to be able to add the names of the mayor and the commissioners uh, to the top of the marker. And so what we're asking you to do is to really take a look at which concept you would like. This is actually showing this context of the house. And this actually shows the type of garden that we'd like to put in. And that the pink looking or red looking impatience and the blue of blue days, we want these to be seasonal colors. We do not want to put any type of large plants here that has roots, because again, we have a capsule that's buried underneath there. But it will always keep it fresh. And so at this time, we're asking if you accept the marker so we can go forth and f finishing the engineering drawings then and whether you would like to have the names of the mayor and the, the commissioners on this or not. I like the time capsule. I like the w where it's located. Um. You want to know what time we're going to be opening? May 13th. I, I think it's kind of neat putting it that, I mean, I won't be here, oh. but... Uh, <laughs> But, um, well, hopefully this time capsule will be, so. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. <laughs> oh, I'm not laughing at you because I know I won't be here We'll discuss our age at that point. Um, I like what you're putting in it. Um, I think it would be interesting 100 years from now to look at what we've looked at from 100 years in the past. So I'm not going to comment, I think, regarding names put on it. That's, I'm, just, I'm not comfortable doing okay. that. Okay, let me ask one question. Oh, well. First, okay. everybody okay with the location? Yes. Okay, so we're good with the location. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay, Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, yes. Commissioner, he said yes. 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 Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. I have a uh, comment. Um, I, I guess I'll take the bullet because I don't care. Um, I'd be a vote for not putting the names of the commissioners on there. Um, I don't think it's about any five people. That's the whole point of it. Um, and I'd like to see um, the list of things that were going to be included. Um, I personally didn't think they spoke about the people and the character of the town. Um, I'd like to see more work done there. I don't know if, uh, I mean, just just now thinking about it, I don't know if there's something that can be done with uh, the Unity Project or proclamations or whatever. Herit you talked about heritage. I don't, golf balls and frisbee golf doesn't do it sentimentally for me. Um, maybe it does for others. I like the ideas about the uh, the writings and those things. I think that more in that vein. Yeah, we are, and, and Joy and I have, uh, we've talked about how we want to use some social media to get ideas from the community. Yeah, I think that's. What do you think needs to go in there? Do you have something you'd like to donate that will that we can fit in there? We do have certain size limitations. But, I like those ideas. So those are some of the things yeah. that we're doing. So this is going to be evolving as it relates to what goes in there. Um, and we'll be coming back to you as we kind of flush these ideas out of what actually will be those contents. <clears throat> and so we're kind of, well, you'll, this is not the last you're going to see me did with you, my excitement. Did you read off what, was, what, you, what suggestions were to go in there? Well, actually, in your packet, if you go uh, back to... I mean, they didn't know what they said they were going in there. They just said that was a suggestion. Was, these are just different ideas that we brainstormed. Yeah, nobody said that. We, that's why it's up here. No, I like it. I understand what Mr. Kennedy said. And some of these things, you see, I, they're just thrown in there. But, you know, pickleball and things like that. Well, I'd like to see newspaper, a newspaper maybe where someone can look back 100 years, things like that that are... Yeah. I don't, I, well, well, now it, we realize how big it is. I wonder how you're going to fit a Monopoly game in there. Well, that's a, that's well, and it's big. Whole, it is big. You're looking at a almost a four and a half foot long by almost four foot wide and almost two feet deep vault. 
so it's sizable. I can get smaller vaults, but I started with the biggest one, and then we can and order down, so to speak, so I can know anything could fit. So that's kind of how we. Well, I thought that. the whole purpose was is to put suggestions. I don't take care about pickleballs, and I don't care about the other. I do care about pickleball. See, I'm getting you to comment on it. But that I'm was saying, my it intent. It was the only reason that's there tonight, not to make a slander on it, but just to say that it's the suggestion. Suggestions. And Possible. We're going to decide what it is. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And we'll be bringing what, those. What, what was? It? Did you not get one that was in the other building, that the, the, where, where our old city hall was at? What near a? What near a thing there when we tore that down? A time castle? Yeah. Cornerstone, probably. I that one. I, I just asked. That's what I'm I asking. I do not know that. I, yeah. So. All right, commissioners. I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Some of you, somebody, somebody's going to understand what I'm about to say and somebody's not going to understand what I'm about to say. We didn't start the fire, but it's always been burning since the world's been turning. So when I, when I think about time capsules, I think about the Billy Joel song and, and how he goes through a, a, um, a litany of, of time in that particular song. And when I think about time capsules, I think about um, what, what was going on in the world uh, during that time, what was going on in, in this country, what was going on uh, in, in this state, in this county, in this city. And I think that when, when we think about time capsules, I think about those things and being able to uh, um, be able to um, uh, uh, identify uh, what was going on. I, I know we talk about newspapers and things like that, but uh, when I think about time capsules, I think about from that perspective, these are the things that I, I, I think we should put in there. Uh, I don't think it's about uh, as Commissioner Kennedy stated about any any one group of people, uh, but uh, the sanctity of of the city leadership at the time, which shouldn't have a name, it is it is the city. So I I, I believe that it should be uh, ordained by the city and not the city commission. So that's my comments. Okay. I'm just waiting, everybody. Let's vote on it. See what we want to do. I'm. I'm are we voting on the time the time capsule location and the size? Are we just voting? Yeah. Are we doing the location of it? Well, I thought we had location by consensus, which I think is, is fine. Everybody to consensus. I mean, this is not something that officially has to have a vote. I mean, we can even say whether you want your names on it or not by consensus or you can vote. That's up to you guys on how you want your procedures to go. Well, when you, 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 when you put some of the paperwork in there, it'll have names on it anyway, so don't matter. Oh, the proclamation, uh, yes, yes. No, it you know, will. I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. Um, so I will work on those contents as we start getting more input and bringing those back to you at future updates. Mm -hmm. I think it, one of the things would be interesting, if you take pictures around town at the different areas and put those pictures in there that shows what it was just like yeah. now 100 years ago, we, mm -hmm. we have some of, of different things. But if you put some pictures of there, the different areas of town that was the buildings and what it was and then what it's going to be. It would be amazing to see that. Uh, one of the things I put in there was this photo album of, you know, of different times that we've come, you know, over the past hundred years. And I want it in both a printed version as well as a digital version. Who knows how they're going to be looking yeah. at data a hundred years from now. I mean, just think about a hundred years ago and what we had available to us. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. So, yes, I totally agree with all those things. So we'll refine this list. This was really just a brainstorm dump. And we'll start moving forward with the design. And did I hear consensus? Did it go forth without names? You're going to have the names and the proclamations and other things that are in. Well, for instance, the flower, the flower we use in our design, do you have a name? Passion the flower. name of the flower and why it comes up to me. Because someone's going to say, where did it come up with that? Yeah, I have a story with that, so we can put all that in there as yeah. how, you know, how the things came to be, so not an issue. And I hope the calendar will be yes. in sense, it'll have more detail in it in 12 months that will explain things in 100 years. Yes. What we're talking about. So, again, that may incorporate much more than we can by putting additional items in there. Yeah, I think when we get into what's really going in there, we're going to have some very special things. So. I think it's, right. I'm excited. It looks okay. great. Okay, then we're going to go forward with that. I do have another update Get to the next section. Um, we've been having different committees, and one of the committees is starting to work on the downtown mural. 
And I think what we're not, we're not here to present an idea of the mural, we're doing the process, just to update you where we're at with the process and what we're doing. And so I'd like to uh, have Tori Parrish come in and she's gonna run you through some of the things that we're working on. Thanks, Jenna. Mm -hmm. good, good evening again, commissioners. This time I get to talk about something creative. So again, this item is not an actionable item. This one is an update, but I've been working with a couple of other staff members uh, and we have researched other public art and public mural programs across the country. We've drafted some goals and guidelines and we've flushed out a timeline and we've given a lot of thought to agreements that we would put into place. So the intent of this mural is to promote the city of Ocoee's centennial year and celebration and to inspire civic pride through a prominent visual art installation that reflects the character of Ocoee and enriches the environment and its users. The location would be the west facing wall of 104 West McKay Street, as you can see on the slides. And then our design guidelines, there's a little bit more to them than just two bullet points, but they do boil down to content and durability. We're looking for vibrant imagery that reflects Okoye's history, and this mural will function as art and not signage. And then, like I said, we've developed artist qualifications, but that boils down to we're looking for artists with proven experience on large format exterior installations. And then we've developed an artist selection process along with that timeline. Uh, just to give you the bullet point version, we're looking for s local Central Florida artists. We've been reaching out to artists last week and this week to see if they would be interested. And then we're going to uh, accept resumes, portfolios, work samples through this week, and then we're gonna shortlist that down to uh, three to five. We'll then ask for concept development, and then once we've gone through those, we're gonna bring two to three concepts to you to vote. Can I ask you a question? Did you ask I did. or call the lady at the high school? I did. Okay. I spoke to her. Right. She's interested. Okay. All right. And then, actually, that's the end of the update. So, again, this is an update. Nothing to vote on tonight. You will be voting on a concept later in about a month. But if you have any questions or feedback or concerns, I'm happy to answer them. Commissioners? I, I think it's great. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Everything good. All right. Very good. And when you just, come up, you will show it to us before we paint it, right? <laughs> You'll be voting between be the concepts. Yeah. Be it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got to be unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's some other things that we'll be bringing back from agreements and, and other components. So as you'll be seeing this. All right. Okay. A really quick um, centennial events. You were kind of uh, we presented those to you okay. at our previous. Um, budget workshop when we're speaking to these. This is just to let you know we're continuing to working on all these projects. This list was provided to you in the packet. I'm not gonna go through the list. The only thing I'm gonna mention is that there was a change in date from what I provided as an attachment on the Spring Into Conservation event. Uh, I believe we had it as March 8th. It's gonna be March 1st, so that has been changed. Um, but here are the things that we're constantly having staff to start working on. We've made sure that none of the dates coincide or conflict with something that you may have want to be doing something different or something that may compete for the community's interest. So in a lot of these you'll see too, we're using our existing events that we've been doing and kind of just giving it a little bit of centennial twist. Mm -hmm. And so as we go forward, we're going to, to bring those back to you. The one thing I do want to add by the mural, we are doing, we do want to paint it so that by the time we get to our Valentine Day, Real, that's a, kind of our first big splash of next year, then that's when the mural will be ready for viewing. So we can kind of use that too to kind of introduce the, it's now 100 years celebration. Kind of neat when you ride into some towns. It's a great view. Their, they see the, pa the painting on the wall. It, you remember it. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Cool. So with that. Mm -hmm. All right. That it? That's that, it? That is it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Kennedy. I'll let you start it off. <laughs> I only have one comment, and it's to reiterate a passing comment I made, which is as uh, staff looks at the land development code, I hope they'll also look at the process and make improvements to that 
communication and engagement with the citizens in our district is something that always needs improvement. And um, I know there's certain regulatory compliance issues that things have to come to us, but I think I think when someone brings something that was unanimously or four to one denied by the P&Z and they're still sitting here going, you know, can you vote for it? Can you vote for it? And three people show up. There's just something fundamentally wrong with our engagement. So that's my only comment. Me? Yep. <laughs> I think I spoke incorrectly but, um, before. But tomorrow, I believe, Craig, you are officially our... I think I was incorrect before, but you are now our official city manager effective tomorrow, if I'm correct? Am That's I correct? Great. Yes, so welcome. Thank you. So we're glad to have you. <laughs> now it's all in your hands. <laughs> okay, but we're glad you're here. It's still warm. Well, <laughs> we're, well. We don't want to put you in a hot seat, so thank you. We're glad to have Craig as our city manager's effective tomorrow, so he'll no longer have the acting in front of his name. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Firstner? No, I don't have any comments tonight. Commissioner Oliver? Craig, you got the keys. <laughs> <laughs> Time to take a ride. <laughs> Lots of work to do. Um, <clears throat> one of the items, I, I have actually a couple items tonight. Um, one of the items I want to make a comment about is I've been doing a little research uh, through some different cities. I went through uh, National League of Cities, also Florida League of Cities. There's uh, uh, some programs other cities have out there that I've been doing a little research on that I may be bringing back for just a brief presentation. They have a program called uh, uh, See It, Click It, Fix It. Uh, what it does is allow citizens to see different things that they may uh, may need attention, like sidewalks or trees being down, and you're able to, to see it. They can take a picture of it using an app. It goes to the city. City takes a look at it. Goes to the right department. Department goes out and fix it. Sends it back to the app, and it's and, and it's fixed. So again, see it, click it, fix it. So I'm in the process of doing more research about that particular uh, uh, program. I think it may be something that could be beneficial to uh, the city and the citizens. Uh, so um, I'll have more information about that um, uh, in the coming coming future. Um, uh, last Tuesday night, uh, actually last Tuesday during the day, um, again the corner of Clark Road. And uh, Clara Cone O'Coy, as the gentleman stated, we had a fatality there. Uh, I was there that night um, talking to the officers. I, I, I saw the coroner when the coroner came in. And uh, it, it just it affected me uh, to the point where I, I haven't really slept much um, thinking about that intersection and the, the issues we've been having at that intersection. And uh, one of the issues is that there is, when you're going north and south, there is no left turn signals. Uh, the county has promised that once that road is, is, is complete, they will put that in. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we can't wait. We cannot wait for that road to be complete to put a left turn signal there because we cannot afford to suffer any more loss of lives at that particular intersection. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm just going to ask, is it possible if, if, the, if uh, our staff can uh, draft a letter to the county to say, we need this done now? We don't need to wait because I, I, we go through there. If you're traveling south heading north um, and, and there's cars that if you're trying to make that turn, they'll turn right in front of you as you're trying to go straight because there is no left turn signal there. It is just, it, it is, it's, it's madness at that intersection and we have to do something about it. So I'm just going to ask if, if we can get a letter out to the, the county and their engineers and the, and, and the commissioners and the mayor to say, we need this done now. We just cannot wait for it. And, I, and I'll, I'll have more information about it as far as uh, the fatalities and the, uh, and, uh, the accident we've had at that particular intersection. I should have that uh, by the end of this week, and I can share that information uh, with you, uh, uh, Craig, to see if we, if we can get them to light a fire upon them for that, that particular, at that intersection. Um, is, is, that, is that okay? That's something that we can do? Or? We've, I've already sent emails. Okay. I've sent uh, like I said earlier tonight, I've made comments to Commissioner Moore. I've sent uh, messages up there to him. They they have to know that's going on. I mean, they they know what happens there. Commissioner Moore does especially. So, I mean, we can send it. It's just already been sent to him. It's been going on for a year that I've been talking to him yeah. about it. 
So. If we could just stay on them, just, I just, I just, just, I just can't bear the thought of any more more death being more lives being lost at that particular intersection. It's just, it's hard. It's, it's just hard. Maybe it just affects me more than others, but it's hard to think that someone just in their life was just gone just like that uh, in a blink of an eye at that intersection when something can be done to prevent it. That, that's that's just my my two cents on it. Can we can we send that? Um, can we send an actual letter? We can send one. Yeah. That's that's consensus. We can do that through the city manager. All right. And, and the last thing I, I, I'll, I'll I'll leave you with is this: um, I should pass this way, but once. Any good that I can do, to any uh, or any kindness I can show to my fellow human beings, let me do it now. Let me not defer, not neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. That was by Annette. Colette, he was a, a uh, Quaker missionary. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. The um, couple couple things here. Um, <laughs> I had to abscond these from uh, Commissioner Wilson. I should have read them at the public part, and I will from now on. This is City of Ocoy Parks and Recreation presents Halloween Howl Night, Friday, October the 25th. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., trunk or treat, food trucks, games, contests, and more. Bill, Priest, Bill Breeze Park, 125 North Lake George Drive. You can pick these up out in the lobby, right? Mm -hmm. That's where she got them. All right. The other one is the Parks and Recreation Department, Jolly Jamboree, food trucks, rides, games, mu musical performance, and much more, and you forgot to put the golf cart parade. The, the golf cart parade goes on there, too. Yeah, so it was a hit last year, so it we'll was. make it back. It was. So it'll be uh, Saturday, December the 14th, 2021. It'll be tree lighting at 7 p.m. downtown Okoy, 3 o'clock p.m. through 8 p.m. Does it still have the doggy? Uh, I mean, the dog, and, okay, the dog parade or, yeah, okay. All right. The uh, couple of things I've talked about, the uh, new city manager, about the grass problems we have. Somebody on our city property, we have got to make a note where people mow our city property. It's hard to code enforce people when we don't take care of our own. Um, I brought it up and brought it up and uh, city manager's gonna address that issue. The other one is semi-trucks parking in town. If you see semi-trucks parked somewhere in one of our downtown areas, let us know because there is a thing that we say we're not supposed to have semi-trucks, and it seems to be they want to do it anyway. So I, I, I keep saying, and I hate to say this in public about Winter Garden, but you, you don't go to Winter Garden and find no semi-trucks parked downtown. So we're in the same thing. We don't want to see them in our downtown either. So we need to make sure we take care of that. And the other thing about what you were talking about, Commissioner Oliver, I think it's a good idea to do that, but we do that. I, I know that I personally, and each one of us is in our in, and our areas should be calling in when there's sidewalk problems, there's tree problems, any of that needs to be turned in right then to us to, you can send them to the city manager, assistant city manager, or I, I always take a picture of what they send me and I send it to the department and to the city manager and ask for somebody to take care of it. So uh, that's, that's that process, we're doing that part already. I know I am, and I hope everybody else is too. So uh, once again, I think one of the things you was talking about, we all ought to be very uh, thankful for our lives and where we're at with what goes on. Look at what's in the paper today and the yesterday. For, they're at over probably 200 people died in that storm. And when we have a storm come through here, we try to let everybody know full, full ahead of things to make sure you know to be safe. Some people don't believe in what that is, and I, not, I hate it to hear it because you look at these towns. I was supposed to go fishing up at Sinahatchee here probably the next couple of weeks. And they were going, and they tore everything down. The buildings are gone. Everything's gone. So these people's lives have changed. It, it, you look at these cities, that small cities up in the Carolinas and Georgia, I mean, they're just devastated. If anybody can help participate with the things, I know I had somebody ask me the other day, could we get together and maybe get stuff to send up there? And I think we can probably contact some people and get that done, but just think about it, how many, how quick your life changes and what happens when the, when the storm comes through like that. I know um, 
it, it's 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 amazing to me that 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 can happen in these days and times, but it is it happens. So we're God looked after us in our air for the storm to pass us by. So everybody have a good evening. Mayor, See you Mayor, in two weeks. Mayor. Yeah. Um. Just real quick. Um. We have a couple of things coming up. Um. We'll be bringing the golf cart ordinance back. Yes, sir. Um, to brief the commission on direction we received, as well as the um, downtown master developer contract um, at the next meeting. And we also have an uh, important appeal to the city commission on November 5th of staff's denial of the Live Local project located at Clark Road. Um, and uh, you will be sitting in a quasi-judicial manner um, at that proceeding. I don't know, Rick, if you wanted to mention anything about that. I, I would briefly that um, because of your role, um, you cannot prejudge the matter until you uh, have the evidence presented to you on November 5th, and, and, and you surely are not um, um, required to speak to anyone, any, any kind of ex parte communications, uh, probably be better not to um, with respect to that project. One last, well, go ahead. Go ahead, I'll wait you through, I got one more. Uh, one last thing. Um, you can remove the acting title off, Mr. Rumor. I just was saving that for myself. Thank you. Did you just find out? One thing I forgot to say, I know the, the stop signs up in your district was put up on the uh, uh, and worst. Yeah. worst and Adair. So the other one is in the process of being designed on uh, White Road where you come out of Montgomery. There'll be a four-way stop at that area also. They're coming out of uh, Correct. where Montgomery. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, that, I think that's got to be designed a little different because it has turn lanes and stuff. So it's coming. So everybody don't worry. That's in the process. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you.